Go on, try it out. Peter, that doesn't look entirely... Go on! Peter, I'm really not comfortable stepping foot on this Lois, stick. I gotta leave in like five minutes. Is this scotch tape? <laughs> Learn oh, TV. you drunk. Many a time in my comment sections, I see the mentions of de-bloated or gaming-focused Windows ISOs or scripts such as Atlas OS and Tiny11. These are usually presented as alternatives to Linux and are touted as being less heavy and more efficient than a regular Windows installation. Now full stop, do not ever install any de-bloated ISO of Windows whatsoever. You are not aware of what they have done to modify or cleanse Windows, and these ISOs usually maim the system, removing integral packages and services and most importantly compromising your security by disabling built-in security features. Now, Obviously, I wouldn't recommend downloading Windows in the first place, but if you have to, and if ISOs are off the table, what about arguably the most popular script in this vein, Atlas OS? Well, first of all, what are the advantages to maiming or trimming down your system? Well, on the Atlas OS website, the script claims that you're going to have significantly less CPU and RAM usage and you're going to see a lot more FPS in your favorite games. And for transparency's sake, they even added a little post therein they conducted their benchmarking. Now for those of you who are astute, you'll notice that they disable a fairly meager security feature like core isolation and disable the most important one, Windows Defender, as a whole. Now obviously this benchmark was done to the extreme as to inflate their projected benefits, as most people are not going to choose to disable such features. But speaking of most people, besides Atlas OS's very own metrics, how do real world tests really stack up? Well, fellow YouTuber and nerd Tech Team GB conducted his very own research into Atlas OS's supposed performance benefits and found virtually nothing. The numbers shown didn't even differ close to or beyond 5 frames in his very own gaming test. The test showed similar and arguably even worse results for Atlas OS's advantage concerning latency. Well, that's just one such case, so what about other results? Well, this curious result showed a more noticeable increase in performance, showing a decrease from over 10% CPU utilization to around 2-3%. Now, before you pack up your bags and go install Atlas OS, one very important thing to consider is that on any reasonably performing CPU, performance increases on idle just don't translate to anything all that tangible when doing intensive tasks on your computer. Having less services is not the only factor and simply doesn't translate to something like gaming, as shown in Tech Team GB's video. Not only that, but Atlas OS's very own forums seem to be plagued with users constantly reporting issues concerning compatibility and removed features. Now, I'm sure a fair few of these are people who are simply clueless about the fine prints of what Atlas OS does to your system. However, a few curious cases like a contributor being testy with the user concerning a problem with Microsoft Store not working that has been excellent for nearly a year and one user reporting the same issue multiple times to no avail may show some negligence but I'm not making any sweeping claims, as the evidence is a bit inconclusive. However, these are things to consider. In the end, Atlas OS seems like a very underwhelming option for those who already perform decently on their system, in search of squeezing another drop of performance out. Going through the trouble of reinstalling your entire system only to have a marginal increase in gaming performance is not the most appealing sell, so I wouldn't recommend it. As for systems that struggle to run Windows flat out, Atlas OS simply doesn't provide any performance advantages that are not matched or far exceeded by simply switching to even the most bloated distributions of Linux, especially considering that you have to reinstall your system just to reap these benefits. An important concern also arises from the untested and frankly unstable nature of removing services and packages from Windows without foreknowledge of what is to happen. And despite how tested Atlas OS may appear to be, you cannot verifiably say that maiming these services does not harm your system's stability or integrity, as Windows is closed source and messing with or removing binaries on a closed source system is quite risky at best and detrimental to long term system usage at worst. Windows's inner workings are simply not well documented enough to make an airtight claim on the efficacy of these deep loading tools. So my verdict is that if you have a system running Windows and you don't want to try your hand at Linux, don't use this tool if your system runs serviceably anyways. It just isn't worth the risk and it really isn't worth the meager increase in performance. That's all. Cheers.